Yeah, hi, it's Jordan. We are so, um, continue, I'm continuing my piano lessons or my talks about myself because somehow, um, I feel that a lot of people are thinking of this kind of living dead artist who's able to be discovered after the death, just like Van Gogh or, um, some of the other artists. Um, I just have to add, if you're somehow acquainted with the history of art and history of a lot of artists, a lot of them have been earning their money as artists during a lifetime, and a lot of them have been already making a name uh, during the lifetime of their after. But there is this one phenomenon called Vincent van Gogh, who is uh, well, a Dutch painter and um, who is one of the examples of a very unhappy um, artist, or maybe not unhappy, but somehow, um, you know, not um, successful enough during his lifetime, but then incredibly successful after after his death. And this is something really very annoying to me in this point, because as a matter of time, if you're an artist. Um, everyone knows that you're an artist. It, it is impossible to be a painter and, uh, and somehow hide yourself from the world. A painter is, always, uh, is an obvious person. It's always obvious that you're a painter because you're always somehow walking with paintings in your hand. Uh, in your hands, you're always carrying something very. Um, very heavy in your hands because to be a painter means to carry canvas um, and to uh, be visible on a street with canvas. Uh, people are not able not to realize you're a painter because sometimes your hands are covered with, uh, with uh, colors and with some wild co colors and you're smelling a little bit like uh, um, acrylic or oil colors or whatsoever, obviously it does smell. And it is impossible to be a painter and not to be realized and accepted as a painter. It's just impossible. So obviously Vincent van Gogh was very obviously a painter and he was known in every city he was living in. hundred uh, percent sure everyone in the city knew this man is creating paintings and he's producing a lot of paintings and he's uh, living as a painter so there is this one fairy tale about him who kind of sold only one painting in his lifetime and uh, never sold anything but was painting all the entire time of his life and then he died he passed away and he somehow cut away his ear and he was getting crazy because now he was drinking too much of this absent, which was kind of poisonous and not so very healthy. And his brother somehow turned um, away from him, etc. Et so it was all the, this a lot, a lot of situations producing unhappiness in his life. Um, but at the same time, after his death, after, after uh, his death, he became enormously popular and his paintings uh, have been sold to the prices of millions and billions of dollars because all of a sudden he got this huge name and his huge popularity and his style was the best and his art to paint was all of a sudden the most admirable worldwide and all the artists and all the masons and all the uh, supporters of art have been here to accept him as a genius, as the most genius artist, uh, but unfortunately passed away. So behind it, uh, there are probably a lot of people who are um, have been high, have been working tirelessly on this mythology and this legend of Vincent van Gogh, who just kind of needed to pass away, and they've been all waiting for him to be a dead body because um, it was. Um, it was nice to have his paintings in the, in their possession, and maybe uh, the family of Vincent van Gogh was possessing the entire opera of his, and uh, they've been the ones who are creating this money. 
uh, after his death and accumulating all of his richness because uh, they've been the first family and his brother and his um, family of his brother and so So uh, somehow the uh, society of Germany is really keen and eager to put me into this um, into this shelf of being the new Van Gogh, like I didn't sell one painting and I'm gonna be drinking up sand and uh, cutting my ear off and some stupidities. Well, uh, I can say something about it. So number one, I'm a woman. And number two, when in 21st century, it is, it is impossible to uh, be neglected or to be unknown in the times of internet and Facebook. It's just impossible. Because everyone is able to Google you within one minute after you're telling, uh, you're telling um, your name. And it is impossible to be an unknown artist and it is also impossible uh, to drink some stupid absinthe or whatever uh, because absinthe is somehow more or less prohibited to be sold in a lot of countries and uh, well to be honest with you I'm not a big fan of alcohol at all um, so um, obviously you can take a look at my ears they are both at the right place I'm never cutting my so I am not suicidal and I'm not some kind of masochist. I'm never cutting my body. I think my body is splendid and I love my body. And obviously I'm not walking around with some knife, uh, making some uh, paintings on my skin or on my body parts. So I am not Vincent Van Gogh. And uh, while being a painter and an artist, I sold much more than one painting. Um, I sold uh, paintings um, of an amount of uh, at least 2,000 euros. So I uh, sold a lot of paintings. And maybe I'm not Gerd Richter, but I was not even, even trying to be this professional and we will walk this path to the end of my life because I'm a studied musician and not a painter. Painting was my hobby. Uh, and I like to paint, but um, I was never following this path uh, really professionally, so I'm uh, eager to get an agent or I'm eager to have uh, my paintings to be printed on uh, t-shirts or to connect it with fashion because obviously visual art is uh, obviously a lot of time a part of fashion design. So this is not a part of my life like it was a part of life of Vincent van Gogh. So my big uh, uh, kind of a big um, uh, question or big uh, favor to all the world was to not uh, wait for my death. I am not Vincent van Gogh. Um, I am a woman and I am not Frida Kahlo because Frida Kahlo was a sold out artist during her lifetime. She was a full time painter and artist during her lifetime. She was not discovered after her death. And uh, please do not destroy my uh, spinal cord because you were so eager to put me into the shelf of Frida Kahlo or to put me into the train of her. Uh, even if my birthday is one day after her uh, or after her is because she's uh, uh, born on July the 6th and I'm on July the 7th, it doesn't make me a relative of Frida Kahlo. It also doesn't make me a relative of Frida Kahlo because I am not in Mexico. I am not married to a painter. For example, uh, Gerd Richter is not my husband. I am not producing a lot of paintings. I am not creating any exhibition. I am not interested in any meeting with any politician. I am not uh, connected to the family of Trotsky. I am not a communist. I hate communism. I am really uh, not spending the entire life in a hospital. I am not using some uh, uh, walking vehicles because I'm not walking uh, on my own, etc, etc, etc. But a lot of differences between me and Frida Kahlo. So I really would like to ask every German, do not put me into the shelf. I am not this one of artists who is to be discovered after her or his death because we are living in the 21st century and to discover my name, it takes one minute to Google me, to find me everywhere on YouTube, Facebook, or 
forever and to look at the things I'm creating and I am a writer, I'm creating screenplays and books and I'm creating my own songs and a musician and I studied music and painting and art uh, was a part of my life, yes, but it is not longer a part of my life because obviously I'm following the path which is giving me money daily and it is music and it's because I studied music and this is why I'm a musician and not a painter. So please re just respect this reality. I'm a musician. I'm in my profession. I'm a studied musician with a lot of degrees and a lot of diploma and I got through every exam successfully. I'm not a loser in my profession. I'm a very big winner and I'm a very successful person in what I'm doing because um, creating a song at the same day and performing uh, performing the same day uh, it's got to be a very big talent and you have to have gut and you have to have voice and you have to have this experience of being on stage on, in front of the audience and you have to have a certain amount of uh, database of music in your head and your hands to be able to write a melody without a minute so I'm a genius musician and genius artist and I'm a painter. Consider that.